Hey guys, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this new Banks album 3. Jillian Banks is an alternative R&B singer who, is also, who has also dabbled in a little bit of electronica and even some trip hop. Now, around the time of her debut, 2014's Goddess, this album was released with a lot of mixed feelings from people and let me tell you something, I understand it. This album came out at the end of a long string of albums where just about everybody was trying to be sappy and moody and dreary and heartbroken and blending elements of trip-hop and electronic. I get why people around the time were a little sick of it. Personally, though, I absolutely obsessed over Banks' first album. I love the moody verses and Banks' very sort of fragile attitude, but she was also ready to fight at any moment. Tracks like Begging for Thread and Waiting Game are genuinely great singles. But tracks like Goddess, Brain, and Fuck em Only We Know are really fantastic deep cuts that make you want to sit through the whole album, even though it's a little long. Now, a couple of years later, she came out with The Altar, showed her a little bit more experimentation from Banks, and that was interesting. And certainly tracks like Gemini Feed are great. I also met her around this time. I'm sure there's going to be a picture of me and her floating across the screen somewhere just because she always looks so goddamn beautiful whenever you see her and I just look awkward wherever I am. So yeah, overall, this album really didn't hit me as hard as I hoped, but when it was good, it was really good. Now, with the arrival of these new singles, it's been obvious of one thing. Banks has certainly gone pop on us, but going into this album, I felt like she needed a real mix-up in her sound. Let's see if she pulls it off. Like I was saying, singles like Gimme are like a hard left turn when it comes to Banks' music, but it plays off in her favor. More than anything, it takes a little bit of time to get used to, I feel like. Because overall, with tracks like this at least, the Banks formula has changed drastically. The production here is pretty freaking awesome, and when that beat comes in for the chorus, it hits hard. Not to mention, I love the sheer amount of attitude on this track. Like, in times like this, I'm really glad that Banks is trying some new stuff and hearing that these results are coming off as good as they are. As far as singles goes, I'm pretty sure Contaminated is my favorite. I love the very eerie production here. That's a very big callback to her early days. And once again, this has a very fragile feel at first. And while this one creeps on slowly, one thing that does not change is this production. The production is still stellar. Now, one thing I do have to point out, while Banks on tracks like these does sound a little bit more fragile, a little small once again, she seems like that she has this newfound power in herself that I do really like. All in all, this is a great song. Once again, it's going to take you a little while to sit with it and get used to her new sound, but once you do, you're going to like it. Godless is a very cool, dreary ballad. From a distance, this is a sound that Banks has been working with for years, but this is, in every way, the next logical step for her, honestly. I love how epic the production is and how immense the beat is once again once it rolls around. Like, moments like this makes me genuinely happy because you see, Banks took what was working for her for years, trimmed the fat, took a lot of the same kind of tales of heartbreak. But then she trimmed the fat, got focused, and creates really great tracks like this. And from a distance, look what you're doing to me featuring Francis in the lights. Scared the hell out of me because... I have never once enjoyed anything from Francis and the Lights. But ironically, they have a lot of really great chemistry on this track. Banks' passionate singing over some of those retro synths is actually like a match made in heaven. Like, I'm not as crazy about some of Francis and the Lights' vocals. Those could have been left out. But that's just me. I digress. This track is actually really great. And call me crazy, but I think Propaganda might be my favorite track here. This for her is just a great medium. It's still that same old, sort of moody, sort of somber, but yet ready to strike Banks. But in this instance, once again, she goes for a more modern sound, but this time sounds right at home. Interestingly enough, there's almost like a throwback pop sound, but it ends up coming off like she's been doing this for years. It's just so damn catchy, and I really honestly think this may be the most instantaneous track she's written since Begging for Thread. Alas, though... There's a lot of this album that is not good, sadly. Just not good and just sort of this freakish monster between what's left of her old sound and this pop sound that she wishes that sounded just a little bit better. Take, for example, Stroke. As far as she goes, as far as her vocals go, Banks sounds really great. As a matter of fact, as far as vocals go, this probably is her strongest album. She sounds so sure of herself. 
But here, there's just a mishmash of all these ideas that do not sound good, not even close. The production and the beat here are just sort of okay at best. Not to mention, like, these lyrics here seem like a rehashing or like a summary of everything on the altar and God has put together. And for the life of me, I really don't know what to make of Sawzall. Look, her departure into the world of pop has actually done a lot of good for her on this album. But this sort of like lounge act vibe is just not what I showed up for and I don't know what to make of this. Her vocals here, I don't know what happened, but she doesn't sound as interested and I'm not as interested as well. There are some nice small details, like some of those throwback synths once again, but this track is just genuinely awkward. Even when it picks up, there's nothing here that comes together, I think it's the worst track of the bunch. Hawaiian Mazes, really sloppy. Like, sadly, I don't know how we've got here, but this sounds like a Mariah Carey cover. And if it was a good one, I would let that slide, but too much of this track is just Banks trying way too hard to be something that she's not. And it's a shame because lyrically this is very tragic, dare I say compelling. But is this really what we've come to? Like, I knew Banks needed a shakeup, but this just isn't it. I'm not really sure of what to make of if we were made of water either. Look, I'm as happy as the next guy that Banks has found some sort of inner peace. But this to me is just so hokey. The vocal effects more times than not just come off goofy. And while Banks sounds content with all this, there are times here where she sounds a little awkward. The production does get interesting, but only in like the final minute. I really don't know what's going on. Even this album's finale, What About Love? Like, I don't know how we've gotten here. Start Banks started off this album so fearless to like dive into this pop sound, but make it her own. How we've gotten so bland and faceless by the end of the album is beyond me. Once again, this is coming off like a damn cover. And you know what? It's a shame because once again, lyrically, this is pretty compelling. But outside of that, this just doesn't work for me. And the few other tracks here are just kind of average at best. Like this album's intro, Till Now, has a really weird sort of lo-fi intro that really rubbed me the wrong way at first. Even though 30 seconds later, we're totally in Banks' world and everything's fine. I will say this though, how average this track is and how average this album is, I can't stress enough, Banks' vocals once again sound amazing. But yeah, as an intro to this album, it's very straightforward, very bland. However, I will say this as well, I do like how genuinely chaotic and intense this track gets by the end, something that I'd love to hear more from Banks. Alaska, once again, is smack bang in the middle in like the worst way. I feel like once again, there's a very early 2000s R&B vibe, dare I say a cover song again. Thankfully, Banks does pull this one off and this one ends up becoming a serious jam. As far as Banks' performance goes, it's actually one of her best here. I just am not that into the production or the beat here. Once again, this is sloppy. And the fall, at the very least, is sort of a wake-up call in the final leg of the album, especially with that very intense, vocal-heavy intro. But, like, I swear, Banks runs out of steam really quick here. While some of the verses here are just really hard to get through, Banks does save this one with a very intense and bombastic chorus. But this track, like this album, is just so hit and miss. I think I'm done here, folks. So yeah, going into this album, I think it was very obvious that Banks needed to do something different with her albums. And she certainly did. She dove headfirst into a more pop-centered sound. And when it's good, she's releasing some of the best singles since, like, the early days of her career. Really fantastic tracks. However, like, she runs out of steam fast, ends up sounding like a cover song way too much. And most importantly, she just seems like she gave up some of her personality in the process as well, which is really kind of sad. I'm feeling like a decent six on this album, but let me know what you think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, guys.